Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 1 to 2 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about fragment caching in ASP.NET. We discussed the basics of caching in parts 119 to 121. Please watch these parts from the ASP.NET tutorial before proceeding with this video. Caching parts of a web form is called as partial or fragment caching. In a web application development, there might be scenarios where most parts of the web page changes, but a specific section of the page is static. And let's say that specific section also takes a long time to load, then this is an ideal scenario where fragment caching can be used. For example, let's say I have a web form where we are displaying you know, company events or company news along with some other information that's free, that frequently changes. Along with that information, we are also displaying, let's say, this past 10 years total sales by product line. Okay, now since this is past 10 years uh, sales data, this is unlikely to change frequently. And moreover, obviously, if I have to compare, I mean, compute uh, the past 10 years total sales, just imagine how much time it's going to take depending on the volume of data that's there in the database. It could take at least a few seconds. Obviously, for the query to process, you know, since it's taking a little uh, time, it adds up to the page load time. Okay, and since this data is not bound to change, obviously, this is an ideal candidate for caching. Okay, but look at the scenario. On this web form, we don't want to cache everything. We only want to cache that section which displays this uh, total sales. But all the other sections, you know, they have to be uh, reprocessed every time we load that web form. So how do we cache only that specific portion of the web form using fragment caching? Okay, so how do we achieve fragment caching? There are three simple steps. Encapsulate that specific section of the page, in our case, this past 10 year total sales per product line, um, you know, into a user control. And then we use the output cache directive on the user control to specify our cache settings. And finally, we'll drag and drop that user control on the web form. But on the web form itself, we do not specify any cache settings. Since we have specified the output cache directive on the user control, only that user control will be cached. Let's look at this in action. Now, we will be using a table called TBL products in, in, in our example. And this table is going to contain ID name and product description columns. And it also has some sample data. So select star from TBL products. So there are four rows which are produced using this insert script here. And obviously, I also have the stored procedure SP get products. And if you look at the stored procedure, it simply retrieves all the rows from that particular table. And since there are only four rows, obviously, the query completes in less than a second. But let's introduce some artificial query processing time. And to do that, we can make use of, uh, you know, wait for delay in SQL Server. So wait for delay. And we can specify time, how much time you want to block the execution of this stored procedure. In my case, let's say I want to block it for 0 hours, 0 minutes, and 5 seconds. So let's alter the stored procedure. And if we execute the stored procedure now, it's going to take at least 5 seconds. Why? Because we are intentionally blocking that using this wait for delay. Okay, look at that. As soon as five seconds is completed, uh, we get the data back. All right, now let's go ahead and invoke this um, stored procedure in an ASP.NET Web application. Now remember, we want to encapsulate you know, this data into a user control. So obviously, in our ASP.NET Web application project, let's go ahead and add the user control. So add new item, and I want to add a web user control, and I'm going to call this you see products control because this is going to display product related information. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We are going to invoke this stored procedure and display this product data on this user control. And just to speed things up, I have the HTML already typed in for that user control. And if you look at the design of this user control, it's pretty simple and straightforward. All I have here is, you know, one, two, three, and four TRs. So there are four table rows, you know, I have created a table with style is equal to, I've set border, the table border as one pixels, solid black, that's why you see a border around the table. And then in the first row, we have that static text products user control. That's the heading that you can see there, products user control. And then I have a grid view control in the next TD, in the next TR. 
I have the grid view control and in the third tier we are displaying the server side time so user control server time that's the static text and we have a label control here to display the server side time and then finally in the last row we have the static text user control time and then we are using JavaScript obviously uh, to print the client time okay so we are using the JavaScript date function to retrieve the client side date uh, date and time and then we are using document.write obviously to print that uh, to the browser all right so that's the simple uh, UI design I'll have this HTML posted on my blog so if you want to copy it I mean you can copy it from there obviously in the page load what we want to do we want to set the label one text to the current date and time so date time dot now dot two string so this will retrieve the current date and time and display that within this label one control okay and the next thing that we want to do is we want to call the stored procedure execute that and then uh, retrieve the result and display it within this grid view control obviously to do that we need to write a bit of ADO.NET code and we have discussed about ADO.NET in the ADO.NET video tutorial so if you haven't watched that I would strongly recommend you to do so before proceeding with this video and again to speed things up I have this ADO.NET uh, code already okay so in the page load I'm gonna create you know the connection string obviously configuration manager SQL connection these are present in their own namespaces so we need to import some namespaces here system.data and system.configuration because configuration manager class is present in system.configuration and finally system.data.sql client that should get rid of all the compilation errors there so we are reading the connection string from web.config file so let's quickly check in web.config file if we have the connection string there so the connection string here it's db connection string so let me copy the name of the connection string and paste it here so we are reading that connection string into this variable and using that variable we are creating the SQL connection object SQL data adapter and we are calling the stored procedure SP get products this is the stored procedure SP get products and we are specifying you know the command type is stored procedure and creating a data set filling the data set with you know the data from the stored procedure and finally setting the data set as the data source for the grid view control and call the data bind method pretty simple and straightforward okay so now look at this we didn't specify any cache settings on the user control at the moment okay so let's go ahead and specify the cache settings how do we specify uh, cache settings using the output cache directive so I can go ahead and use the output cache directive there and the output cache directive has got two mandatory attributes one is the duration so let's say I want to cache this web form maybe for 30 seconds and another one is vary by param so for now I'm going to set vary by param to none okay so we specified the output cache settings on the user control all that is left out is use this user control on a web form because since we have specified the cache settings here you know this web form I mean this this user control is going to be cached alright so let's flip to the web form now let's say on this web form I want to use that user control so let's save everything let's drag and drop that user control onto the web form um, actually let's flip to the design mode and then drag and drop it so that it gets added properly so we have the user control there okay so the register directive is added and then we have the user control here now let me design this web form I have the HTML here so on the web form let's copy and paste this HTML again I will have this HTML and code available on my blog just in case if you want to follow the example along with me okay so again if you look at this this is a pretty simple design all we are doing here is we have a table here and within the table we have one two three and four TRs okay in the first TR what we are doing we are having the static uh, text page content that changes so basically if you look at this web form you know let's say we might have some data that frequently changes here you know at all these locations 
and this is the user control which we dragged and dropped on the web form. So if you look at this in the last TR, I have the user control. Okay, and in the TR above the user control, we are printing the page client time, the client time on the web web form. Okay, so that's using the JavaScript and document.write method, and then page server time. That's the static text there, and we have a label control on this web form to display the page time, the page, the web form server time. And similarly, this is the static text on the page on the top row. Okay, so simple web form design. So obviously, the one last thing that we have to do in on this web form is we have a label control where we want to display the current date and time. So let's go ahead and display that using date time dot now and let's convert that to string all right so let's browse this web form so that's web form 1.aspx so let's run this press control f5 remember the first time this web form loads it's going to take at least 5 seconds why because we have inter introduced that artificial latency i mean query processing time uh, in the stored procedure using wait for delay okay so when the web form loads up, notice the times page server time 202151 and the client side time is 202158 and notice the user control server time 202151 and 202158 that's because you know the query processing took that six to seven seconds um, and uh, that's why the difference between the server side time and client time and client times between the user control on the web form but now since this is going to be cached for the next 30 seconds look at this when I refresh pay attention to user control server time it's cached at 202151 20, that time is not going to change but rest of all the date and times will change so let's see that look at this for some reason it is still processing that maybe that 30 seconds is elapsed but now let's quickly refresh Look at that, the client side time, the page server side time, and the page client time, and the user control client time all keeps changing, but the user control server time doesn't change. Look at that. So this time is going to change when 30 seconds elapses. Currently at the moment, uh, the time is 20, 23, 10. When this becomes, uh, you know, so look at that 30 seconds is over it's now processing it's taking five seconds look at the time um, 20 23 20 23 28 seconds and now if I refresh this once again all the times change but the user control server time does not change because that code is not reprocessed okay but So now let's discuss about the shared attribute of the output cache directive. Now look at this. On this web form, we are using this user control. Okay, uh, it's possible that I can use this user control on many different web forms as well. Let's say for for example, in my web application, I have 10 to 15 web forms, and on all these web forms, I'm using this user control. Now by default, what happens is ASP.NET caches a separate response for each web form that uses a cached user control. So obviously if I have 10 web forms and on all the 10 web forms I'm using this products uh, user control, then there, there are going to be 10 responses for this user control uh, you know, stored in the cache, one for each web form. Now since all the pages are displaying sa the same data, there's no point in caching 10 responses. I want a single cached response to be shared by all the web forms. So how do I do that? All you need to do is set uh, cached attribute, I mean shared attribute to true. That's what is the significance of this attribute. Shared attribute can be used with output cache directive to cache a single response from a user control for use on multiple web forms. Okay, now this shared attribute is available uh, for the output cache directive only when it's used on the user control. When, you, when we try to set, you know, the shared attribute, when I use the output cache directive on the web form, look at that. 
when I select output cache directive and if I try to select shared look at that IntelliSense doesn't show that up so it's not applicable when the output cache directive is used on the web form it's only applicable when the output cache directive is used on a user control so here I can set the shared attribute to true Now let's not set the shared attribute to true let me actually copy this entire HTML and let's go to web form 2 and let's paste it there and then in the code behind file obviously we want to set the label text so label one dot text is equal to date time dot now dot to string all right and obviously we need to have the register directive for the user control on web form 2 as well so let's copy that and paste that on web form 2 okay now let's go ahead and access web form 1.aspx so obviously this will take 5 seconds to load and then let me copy that URL as soon as that web form loads we'll try to navigate to web form 2.aspx and see how long is that going to take okay look at that that's loaded now if I press enter it's going to refresh quickly because there is a cache response now let's try to navigate to web form 2.aspx and look at this this is going to take uh, additional five seconds for some reason we don't have the user control there let's go ahead and see if there is user control on web form 2.aspx So we don't have that user control. So let's actually copy the HTML from Web Form 1 and paste that on Web Form 2. Let's delete that. Let's paste that there. Yeah, okay. Now the cache for web form 1 might have already been expired so let's run web form 1 once again so press ctrl f5 that should load up web form 1.aspx it's going to take 5 seconds and then immediately when that loads up okay so we have web form 1.aspx let me refresh that look at that only the servers page server side time client page client time and user client time changes but not the user control server time let's navigate to web form 2.aspx and notice that this is going to take another five seconds to load but on the other hand look at this this web form loads immediately look at that that's because look at this so if you look at this web form this user control is is cached at 20 28 15 and this is cached at 20 27 53 okay so basically you know if I have 10 different web forms and I use the same web uh, you know user control on all these 10 different forms then there are going to be 10 different uh, responses cached in the memory but I don't want that I want to use the same cached response on all the web forms I want to share that among all web forms to do that all we need to do is set the shared attribute to true so let me set the shared attribute to true here and see the behavior so shared is equal to true save that now let's close all this so let's copy that URL so let's run this obviously when web form 1 loads it's gonna take 5 seconds but when we try to navigate to web form 2 it loads instantly okay so we are there on web form 1 let me copy the URL let's go to web form 2.aspx look at that it immediately loads and look at the cache date and time 20 29 22 and look at the time here 20 29 22 so it's using the both the web forms web form 1 and web form 2 are sharing the single cached response of that user control all right on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.